In this video, we're going to take a look at finding zeros of quadratic functions on graphs. And what this is going to do is allow us to find solutions for quadratic functions and equations. And we'll take a look at that as we make our way through here. But first, let's take a look at those zeros. What we want to do is look to see where the graph crosses or touches the y or excuse me, the x axis. And these will be the zeros because that is where y is equal to zero. It makes sense because remember if we're graphing and that point that's on the x axis, so if we have an axis here, the point that's on the x axis is where y equals zero because we don't move up or down. Okay, so there's three different things that can happen. One, we could have a graph that looks something like this, where it crosses, remember all quadratics are going to be in the shape of a parabola, and this one crosses in two different places. So, we can have that. <clears throat> Another thing that we could have is if the graph crosses and intersects in just one place so maybe something like like this okay where the vertex is sitting right on the x-axis so that's another option that we could have and a final option that could happen is if the graph never touches the x-axis so three different things that could possibly happen in this first one we have two solutions so in the green we have two solutions, they're right here and right here. In the um, brown one there, I'm going to back up and use a different color for that. Let's go with, uh, how about red? Okay, so here's my solutions here in the green. We have two solutions on that one. In this brownish orange one, we have one solution right there. And in the purple one, there are no real solutions. Now, at some point down the road, you'll probably take a look at uh, complex numbers and imaginary things. But right now, we won't worry about that. So for this one, there are no real zeros for that particular case. Okay, so let's take a look at a few examples here and see what we've got going on. See if we can identify those zeros. Okay, here's one. So what I want to do is first look and see which of those cases it is. Well, it's crossing the x-axis in two points here. And if I look and notice, it's crossing right here. And it's also crossing right over. So we're crossing right here. And we're also crossing right here. Okay, so that means that where it's crossing here well let's see what that value is negative six so one of the zeros would be at negative six and it's also crossing over here which is at positive two so the zeros for this particular quadratic uh, function are going to be negative six and two okay so that's one particular thing that could happen let's take a look at another one here how about if we have this situation? <clears throat> okay, well, we have this quadratic, and which situation do we have? Well, notice how the graph sits right on the x-axis. So here's the x-axis, and the vertex is on the x-axis. So in this case, there's only going to be one zeros, one zero, excuse me, and it's located right here which is at 2 so how many zeros do we have in this particular case we have 1 and it's at 2 okay now the last situation let's take a look at one more here that we have something that might look like this oops wrong one let's get that one out of there alright how about that one so for this one if we look, here's my x-axis, there's the graph. Is that graph ever going to touch the x-axis? No. So in this case, we don't have any zeros. There's no zeros because there's no place where that graph is going to cross 
the x-axis or touch the x-axis. So no real zeros. Okay, so finding zeros of quadratic functions on graph, what we want to do is look for where the graph crosses or touches the x-axis and that is going to be a zero. There's three different things that can happen. There can be two zeros, there can be one zero, there can be no zeros. Hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your math and I know you'll do great.